Hey everybody, it's George from DinosaurGeorge.com. If you've got a question that you'd like to ask me, go to the website, click on the Ask Dinosaur George page, fill out the form and send me your question. Remember, we get thousands of these questions every month and I cannot possibly answer them all. So when you do send one, try to keep it short uh, because it's so much easier for me to respond to those kind of questions. Let's get going. Ben from London, England said, what caused the KT extinction? Uh, for those of you that may not be familiar with the KT extinction, that's a line that we find in the rock formations where underneath that line dinosaurs were alive and above that line they were gone. So we believe that is the line that represents an event that occurred. He said, we all know about the theory that a comet collided with Earth and set off global climate changes, causing the extinction of over 90% of Earth species. But what about the vast lava fields in India? I believe that these may have led to the extinction. Uh, by the way, I am Nadab's friend. Well, first of all, Ben, welcome to the uh, site. I'm glad you found us, and uh, I'm glad you're a friend of Nadab's. He always sends me really cool emails, and so any friend of his is a friend of mine. So, Ben, I consider you a friend now. Um, that's a great, great question, Ben. Uh, down in uh, India, we find what are called the Deccan Traps. Uh, if I remember correctly, it's evidence where so much lava came out that it produced a, a lava flow of three miles thick. Surely that had a huge impact on anything because that would have absolutely changed the climate on the earth. That could have represented, some people think, thousands of years of constant flow of lava. Um, so certainly that may have had something to do with it. Uh, I'll tell you something I, I read, and I have not followed up on this, but I read that somebody predicted that the Deccan traps were actually caused by the impact of the comet. That the comet struck the Earth and kind of sent a shockwave through the Earth and on the other side of the Earth, uh, which happened to be India, uh, it caused those dramatic explosions and, and all that lava to come out. So certainly it's possible that if the, if the asteroid impact and the Deccan traps were related to each other, they certainly combined to make Earth an intolerable place. But even if they didn't, uh, just alone, I agree that the Deccan Trap certainly had the potential of causing the mass extinction, but we don't know for certain if it was one or the other or both. Okay, Zach from Uniontown, Pennsylvania said, Dear George, my birthday is September the 11th, and we all remember what happened eight years ago, but I want to know what is your memory from that day eight years ago? Signed, your good friend Zach. Uh, you know, Zach, uh, let me tell you something. Uh, I'll, I will, of course, like everyone else, never forget where I was at that time. In fact, I was giving a, a public performance about dinosaurs when that occurred. Um, I, I don't like to think of the negatives of that. Uh, and I'll tell you why. Uh, that act was done by a very small group of people. Those people don't represent others of their nationality or others of their faith. Um, it was just a small group of people who did something terribly bad. And unfortunately, a lot of people lost their lives. But here's what I think about when, it, when I think about the memory. I think about how that act brought not just the United States, the citizens of the United States together, but in all honesty, it brought the population of the world together. And what it demonstrated to me was that no matter, no matter how bad things get, good people outweigh the bad people on this planet. And there were good people from all of the earth that came together. Um, and so it proves to me that mankind is actually uh, pretty incredible. We're not evil. We're actually pretty good people. So I like to think of the good thing that came from that. Um, I'm sorry that your birthday is on September 11th, but I'll tell you something, Zach. Uh, it should remind you every time you celebrate your birthday just how many good people are out there in the world because there are a bunch. And uh, you, Zach, happen to be one of those good people, and I'm glad you're my friend. Okay, Rodrigo, my little buddy from Monterey, Mexico. Hi, DG, it's me again. Hey, Rodrigo, good to hear from you again. Uh, and I hope you guys are doing well. I am doing well, and my family's doing well. And Rodrigo, I hope you and your family are doing well. Uh, hey, do you know if T-Rex had any, or he said, how do you know if T-Rex had any bacteria in its mouth? We don't, Rodrigo, we don't know for sure. But we have a pretty good indication looking at animals like Komodo dragon that certainly they could have. And then we look at the shape and design of their teeth and their teeth actually have these little pockets that would have been perfect places for little pieces of meat and blood to accumulate, and therefore bacteria would have easily grown on them. So we don't know for certain, but I do think it's a good guess that Tyrannosaur, and maybe all predatory dinosaurs, had a mouthful of bacteria, and it's probably because they never brushed their teeth. 
But I don't know about you, Rodrigo, but I would not want to go try to tell a Tyrannosaurus Rex he needs to brush his teeth. Okay, this next question comes from my friend Raptor uh, in Lexington, Kentucky. He says, hey, George, how you doing? I'm doing good, Raptor. It's always good to hear from you. Uh, he says, I have two questions since I know how busy you are, so let me get right to the point. Would you mind telling me what I'm going to be doing as an interpreter when your exhibit comes to Lexington? What Raptor is talking about is we have a traveling dinosaur exhibit. It opens in San Antonio, Texas, October 15th through November the 1st. Go to my website, dinosaurgeorge.com, and you can see all the information about it. And everywhere we go, we ask for volunteers. And Raptor offered to be a volunteer if we ever came to the Lexington, Kentucky area. Um, what you would be doing as an interpreter, Raptor, is uh, you would be meeting and greeting the public. You would be walking around the exhibit floor. Uh, if you had one particular animal that you'd really like to... Uh, to stand and talk to people about. You would stand there and talk about that one, or you would just kind of walk around and talk to people about all of the dinosaurs in general and ask questions. He says, my other question is, how would you compare like Pluridon and Megalodon in size? I'm trying to get an idea of how, how space and environments affect size. Okay, I lied. I'm just curious. <laughs> That's cool. Um, uh, I believe like, like Pluridon, if I remember correctly, I think like Pluridon uh, and uh, Megalodon are pretty close in size to one another. Uh, I think Lyplorodon, if I understand correctly, might have been a little bit bigger. Uh, there's a lot of debate about how big Megalodon got. Some people think Megalodon only grew to about 45 feet, I, but I've seen estimates of Megalodon as being uh, pot potentially 95 feet long. Now, if Megs got that big, they would be bigger than Lyplorodon. Uh, certainly, they were close in size to one another, but from everything that I've read, I believe uh, like Pluridon may have been a little bit longer than Meg, uh, but we just don't know. See, the difficulty is with like Pluridon, we have hard bones that we can actually look at and compare to other known sizes and get a little better estimate. With Megalodon, you're really kind of relegated to a couple of vertebra uh, and, uh, and their teeth. Now, when I say vertebra, some people will go, ah, that's not true because sharks don't have bones. Actually, they have cartilaginous vertebra. Uh, and those vertebra do fossilize. So we do find a fossilized vertebra from Megs, and we can compare them in size to the uh, vertebra of a great white shark and then extrapolate the size. Uh, but it doesn't necessarily mean we found the biggest uh, ossified um, or, or fossilized cartilaginous vertebra. Uh, but again, I think most people feel pretty comfortable that Megalodons may have stayed closer to 45, maybe 50 feet. And like Pluridon, I think may have gotten up to 55 feet in length. All right, uh, if you've got a question again, go to the website, dinosaurgeorge.com, write me your question, make it short and to the point. Um, otherwise, if it's real long, sometimes I get those questions and they're almost a page long. I just can't read them all and I'm so sorry. Until next time, everybody, take care of yourself, take care of the people around you. Uh, for you young people, do me a favor, practice your manners, and practice your reading, and if you get good at those two things, I promise you, you're going to be successful. Take care, everybody. I'll see you all again soon.